Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, I'm sick of it, I'm tired, I'm done, and I am sharing with you how to avoid your home looking tacky because if I'm gonna have to look at it, it better be stunning. Now the first thing you have to know about avoiding your home looking tacky is that it always reads as tacky when your house does not match the outside. Your house is not just like an exterior and an interior. We want the exterior to flow inside. And that can mean a couple of different things. One is what style is the outside of your home? Is it, you know, an ultra modern home? Is it contemporary? Is it, you know, desert modern? Or is it traditional? Is it colonial? Is it Georgian? You know, what are, what does your home say about the space, right? That we're expecting to see inside. And this can even go as far as an apartment building is concerned. You know, what does the lobby look like? What is the overall atmosphere when you approach it or you enter Enter, what do you see outside of it? Because if we're going into some, you know, grand, beautiful lobby, we expect the space within to also be grand and beautiful. Just because the lobby of a building is one thing doesn't mean the apartment necessarily will be, but we can add some of those features and make it make sense. So when it comes to the interior of your home, look at what details are on the outside or in the entry or you already have. If you have a more traditional style home and you have a lot of beautiful, thick, big moldings, okay, so let's take the architecture and be consistent with that throughout the space. And you can layer in a different style of furnishing. I actually love to follow people who have a minimalistic style that live in traditional homes. I find them to be heavily detailed, inviting, and welcoming to a space because you get that beautiful trim, that beautiful detail. And the answer to making it feel modern is color drenching it. Usually these people are doing all white, but you can color drench in any color you choose. If you're in that apartment building where you've got this grand and beautiful lobby and your you know, apartment is maybe not that thing, like let's be real, most of these builders are trying to save money. So they're not putting beautiful details and moldings into your apartment. They're putting you know some basic stuff in there that gets the job done. Well, you can incorporate or you can make it feel beautiful and grand in that way by adding some trim or adding a ceiling rose, a medallion to the ceiling under a light fixture, have an electrician out to do that for you. And you know, that's a way to add an architectural feature to create that. But you can also bring in things that just have that feeling. Get an oversized, beautiful, ornate mirror. Boom, it looks good. And, and honey, if I'm coming over, you know the reflection's gonna be gorgeous. You want to have a reference point back to what's happening on the exterior of your home. It's all the time here in Las Vegas. I see it literally all of the time, all over the place, literally even in my own neighborhood where people will buy up homes and go, oh, we're gonna renovate it. We're gonna do the latest, the newest, the modern thing. And it's like, you know, this beautiful quaint home on the exterior, maybe it's Tuscan, maybe it's, you know, a red brick home, all of these things. And then you walk inside and it's like, all white and gray with a fake marble and it looks like it should be you know in the Hollywood Hills and honestly it doesn't even have style there so I don't know what it's doing here it, you know it, it needs to make sense it needs to make sense it needs to feel good otherwise it just feels tacky and nobody wants that you don't want me to come over and be like oh it's nice are you having a hard time coming up with those final design decisions you're racking your brain over them have no fear i am at your service you can always book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me to answer any and all of your design and decorating needs using the link in the description box down below or going to intro.co slash garrett lachic let's talk about something else that it's tacky, honey. It's tacky and it needs to be said. And, and maybe you need to hear this or maybe you just need to hear it so you can give your friends some advice. This is not a dorm room. And it doesn't need to have dorm room decor. And my problem with the dorm room decor specifically is the patterns used. They all have a pattern, okay? Nothing is ever just a solid color. And if it is a solid color, it's like a primary color, okay? It needs to be elevated. Your home should feel mature and sophisticated, no matter what your style is. I don't care if it's eclectic. I don't care if you, you know, you're into manga or you collect action figures or whatever. You can make your home feel elevated and mature, even having those things. But the dorm room decor, the patterns on it are usually horrific. They're terrible. They, honestly, they're not even appropriate for a dorm. Uh, I'm just gonna put that out there so you all understand that for those of you who have kids in college, that taste level hasn't developed yet. That's beside the point. And you know, for those of you who've got the kids that are off going to college, maybe you need to hear this. 
the chevron, the gray and yellow chevron, you know, that one print that's like, like just, I don't know, it's like a figure shaped like a vase or like an hourglass figure. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look elevated. It looks juvenile, which makes your home look tacky. And I don't think you have to have this just because, oh, it's affordable, it's a budget-friendly option. There are great budget-friendly options that look so elevated and luxurious and beautiful that you do not have to resort to having this pattern. And you know, in that same bargain bin, you got this rug from Honey, there was another one that would have been just as good, probably way better because the pattern was either more gradient, a little more neutral, just a solid color. And for me, a lot of the issue I have with these patterns is the graphic nature of them, right? It's like two colors. We have gray, we have yellow, we have black, we have white. It, it's too stark, too harsh of a contrast. A luxurious, a beautiful, an elevated, sophisticated rug is going to have variation in it. It's going to have gradients in tone, and, and that makes sense. That looks more elevated, more luxurious. I don't care if it's a rainbow rug. If it's like an ombre rainbow rug, it's going to look better than something that is just like two colors in a pattern. That's how you use a pattern, make it look luxurious, beautiful, sophisticated, not tacky and cheap like a dorm room, honey. I know, you've made it this far in this video and you were thinking to yourself, Yourself, I have never heard anything more truthful, accurate, or correct, and that is what I always give you here on this channel. So, if you haven't already, we would love for you to become a part of the Lashik family by giving this video a like and hitting that subscribe button and joining us because it means the world to content creators like me and costs you absolutely nothing. Let's talk about something else that's tacky you all need to hear about because I am sick of it and the girls need to know, okay? That's word signs. I've talked about it a million one times alongside everyone else because they all get very inspired by my content, but that's also besides the point. I don't like where the word signs. I just don't, I don't think it's necessary. And I think there is kind of a gray area there where if there's a quote you really love, I don't take that as a word sign, okay? Make it elevated, you know, have it printed, get a frame of it, whatever, cool. If there's, you know, like a quote or something you really love, great. All of the time, every time I bring up word signs, people always say like, I have a sign in my bathroom that says this and I think it's funny. I like that. Share that with me in the comment section. What is the one sign that you have, okay, because that's what I'll allow, one, that is funny. Share that with me down below. But I don't need signs all over the place that say things, that say like joy, hope, live, laugh, love. I'm not loving, I'm not laughing, I am laughing. But it's not for the reason you think it is. I also, recently saw a photo of a kitchen with a sign that said market. I was deeply offended because in this home, not only am I the personal chef, but apparently now I'm employed at the grocery store, honey. I don't think so. This is not the market. This is a pantry. And if it needs to be labeled as such, it can be. But word signs, I don't need them all over the place. Like home sweet home. I know it's my home. I pay the bills here. Okay. I got it. Like, you know, we, do, we just don't need to have that sort of stuff being like plastered all over the place. You wanna have like a, oh, like a gender neutral bathroom sign on your powder room, that's funny, okay? Like you can do that, but leave it at that one thing. I love a quirky moment, but too much of a good thing is not a good thing, especially when it comes to a word sign. And some, you know, and honestly, this could be taken offensively because some people can't read, okay? I think everyone agrees with me that the word signs are a little bit tacky and we can let them go. And a word to the you know home decor manufacturers out there, um, if you need help designing something that will look actually good and people will want in their homes outside of the word signs that are flooding all of the home decor stores, you can send me, a, you contact my business management, honey, because you clearly need the help and nobody else is telling you this. Something else that is tacky and the girls on social media love beside the point, is the sad beige aesthetic. And yes, I am calling it sad and beige aesthetic because it is sad, everything is beige, and you think it's an aesthetic, but it's just a mess. I don't like the all beige everything. And I know there's gonna be all of the trolls in the comments that are like, oh, but this is coming from the person sitting in an all white room. First of all, you obviously don't follow this channel, which, mm, choices. Secondly, this room is not all white, as you can clearly see the artwork behind me. You can't see the rugs, the floors, the furniture, any of that stuff, so spare me, but the sad beige aesthetic, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good, it's tacky, okay? It's sad and it's beige. And once again, it's not an aesthetic. It's literally, beige is a color. It's not an aesthetic. Your entire life is not beige. Now I am going to say what no one is prepared to say, but I will because I always give it to you 100% the truth. 
Usually the sad beige aesthetic is justifiably there because a person just doesn't know what to do. They don't have an understanding of their personal style. They don't know how to curate a space themselves and they think interior design is just everything matching when in reality it's so much more than that. So I will give you that, but honey, you, we gotta get it together. We gotta get, a, get, a, get some color in here, get some interesting elements in here. And what really drives me crazy is like, you know, people will put together these like little real meme type things where it's like, oh, you know, when your husband tries to add to your core aesthetic and it's like their cart is full of everything beige and the one thing that's like not beige, it's brown. And they're like, oh no, it's terrible. Like, come on, give me a break. Like, I, I get you're making a joke, but it's not funny which is probably why your house looks like that anyway, because you have no sense of humor or style. I don't like it. It's tacky, it's boring. It's not indicative of your personal style. Aesthetic means nothing. Your aesthetic is personal style. My aesthetic can't be replicated or copied by anyone, neither can yours, but beige everything is not an aesthetic. Being boring is offensive to me, okay? Your home should tell a story about who you are and the things you like and enjoy and love. And if that thing is beige, Honey, what do you love? A loaf of bread? That's it? Oatmeal? I mean, maybe maybe you do. Everybody likes oatmeal. Okay, I'll give you that. But don't get me wrong. Beige is a fantastic color and is a great base for layering, but that is what it is. It's a base. It's a starting point. It's a neutral. It's a softness to add to the space. It is not the overall, the number one color in your home. Now, the probably number one thing that makes your house look tacky is honestly going to be cheap decor. And I could go on for hours and hours talking about like why cheap decor makes your house look tacky and I'm not gonna do that because I would rather tell you how to find things that are affordable but don't look cheap. And there's a big difference there. The cost and value are two completely different things. So let's talk about looking for decor that looks good, that looks you know beautiful, that looks luxurious, expensive, whatever that will avoid your home looking tacky and looking cheap for that matter. For me in my home, I have very little decor that was purchased brand new. I really like vintage and antique pieces. That's what I'm after because you just don't get that same quality today at all, let alone at that price point. So I'm always on the hunt, whether it's an at an antique mall, uh, I love Etsy, eBay is probably the number one place to get really affordable decor that is interesting. And I totally recommend you check those places out because most of them are small businesses and they're offering really interesting things at good prices. So don't write any of that off. When it comes to looking for decor brand new, there are things to look out for. For example, most pieces of glass, you know, glass decor, whether it's a candlestick or a jar, a vase, whatever, is made using a mold and there will be mold lines on the side. There are two lines exactly opposite each other, either side of a piece. You know, that's something you want to avoid because it looks inexpensive, especially if you have something that's like an antique piece of crystal or a vintage piece, whatever. Putting them next to each other, one of them is going to look significantly less expensive than the other. And it's not gonna be the new piece that looks more expensive, whether it is or isn't. So, you know, you wanna be careful for those things. It's hallmarks of quality you're looking out for. Metal, for example. A lot of metal decor pieces are not either actually metal or solid metal or the color or finish you're looking at. They are painted. If you find something that is like spray painted or it has like a, a bumpy or grainy finish on it, it's probably painted. It's probably not what it looks like and it'll chip, it'll flake, it'll break. It doesn't look good or expensive. Avoid that piece. And if you find something you really like that looks good and you say, well, you know what? Maybe I can redo the finish on this. I can leaf it myself. I can get gold paint and redo this or you know, even like a chrome type of spray paint finish. As long as it's done well and it looks good, that's okay. You want to look for what is the base of it. Something like stone is inherently going to look expensive. It's good quality because it's literally stone, okay? That's a good piece to look out for. Something that is solid metal is not going to break over time. It's not gonna be some flimsy little thing. That's a good piece to look out for. You also wanna look for the quality or finish of wood on a piece, whether it's furniture or accessories. Is it solid? Is it hollow? A lot of these pieces actually are not wood at all. They just have a wood finish and then they are painted to look like that. You know, is that quality? Is it gonna make sense? Also, 
you don't have to bring in all sorts of other pieces. If you like the shape of something and not the color of it, that doesn't mean you have to get it and, oh, I'm gonna refinish it or something. No, you know, adding in some wild card element may not make sense. But I'm not gonna put two of the same things. I'm not gonna put like, oh, this is a new piece of something that's finished in gold and here is something that isn't right behind the camera. I'll put a picture in for you. I have this gorgeous gilt chair. I'm not layering things that are supposed to be the same finish but look completely different next to each other because the new piece is going to look different than an older piece. I'm gonna use things that are different finishes, different materials next to each other to create that layered feel and disguise the fact that one is old and one is new. You want to avoid cheap, tacky decor in your home because it's gonna make it look bad. It's gonna make it look cheap, it's gonna make it look tacky. You want everything to have the same feeling throughout as far as quality is concerned. So be on the lookout for good quality pieces, well-made pieces. That does not mean expensive. It doesn't mean you have to throw everything out and start all over again. It can mean refinishing a piece or looking for something to replace one or two pieces in your home that will get you that elevated look and style you are after. Now that you have discovered everything in your home that's making it look tacky, or at least most of it, let's talk about five dated interior designs that are making a comeback, and I've never been more excited about it. Check out that video right over here, and I will see you over there.